It's Create Day, my friends. Welcome back to another video. I've got four DIYs for you today, and this is a little bit longer than usual, so let's go ahead and jump right in. For my first project, I have this sign that I thrifted. I'm going to go ahead and remove this top hanger that it looks like somebody added to it because it already had a regular hanger on it. And then I will sand this all down and get it ready for paint. I thought I was going to be able to pry this out because it's held in with staples, but the wire was really thick, so I had to cut it and then kind of unwind it and pull it out with some needle nose pliers. I finally got it out, and this left a couple of holes in there that I will have to fill in with some uh, wood filler. I mixed up some Durham's water putty and just with my finger went in there and filled those little holes. There's actually four of them, two on the top and then two on that bottom piece that holds the original hanger. And I'm just using a little scraper to kind of smooth off the top of it and get it as flat as possible. Once that is dry, I will sand that down. I primed it with a coat of my flat black spray paint and then gave this a coat of the fusion paint in the color chocolate. I absolutely love this paint. It glides on really smooth. It has a built-in top coat and I think this is a really pretty brown um, and it will make a good base for what I'm about to do next. I'm using Dixie Belle's chalk mineral paint in the color mud puddle. I'm going to do some dry brushing now just to kind of give this a weathered aged look. So I've got a chip brush that I'm using. I'm offloading most of the paint onto a paper towel and then I'm just going to swipe this completely across from top to bottom or and bottom to top. I do the same thing on all four sides as well and then I will repeat this process with a couple of different colors. Next is the color putty. This is slightly lighter than the mud puddle. And the last color I'll use is even lighter than that, and that's Fusions Paint in the color Chateau. I think this adds a nice mix of colors that makes it look more realistic. I was noticing some rough spots on this. I think it might have been the paint was too dry, and with the chip brush it was just making some little rough patches, so I lightly sanded it down with some fine grit sandpaper before sealing it with DuraClear Matte Varnish. Any sealer will work for this, with the exception of wax, because I'm going to be adding a transfer. So that's the one sealer you don't want to use if you're going to be putting a transfer on. Now I want to put like a little nameplate on the front. This is a mold I got from Amazon. I'll leave a link below in the description box if I can find it. I'm using my amazing Caston resin that cures really quickly, like within 10 minutes, and just pouring that into the mold. Then 10 minutes later, I can demold it, and it's all ready to be painted and decorated for my project. I chose the color parchment for this as a good base coat. However, once I had it done, and I held it up next to the transfer, I felt like it was just too bright of a white. So I do go back in and paint it a different color, a more of an off-white than the parchment is. So here's where I'm, I'm looking at it and it's like, mm, I don't know, there's just a little more warmness in that transfer. So I decided to go with raw silk instead. This color is much warmer and picked up those warmer tones on the board and in the chicken transfer. So this is a transfer from the IOD Brocante collection and I'm just trimming it down to size to fit and getting the wording so that I think it'll still look right. It says Chef de la Volaille, I think is how you say that, which is funny because I didn't know it but I looked it up after the fact and that means <clears throat> Chef of the Poultry and <laughs> it's going on a board with a rooster on it. So I thought, well, that worked out perfect. So I just trimmed it down the best I could. I 
it was really hard because there was nothing left for my fingers to hang onto without touching the actual transfer, which would have pulled it off onto my fingers. So I did the best I could. It's not completely centered, um, like perfectly, but it, you know, it looks pretty good. I rubbed that down with the transfer stick and then burnished it the best I can with that little piece of transfer sheet. Now I'm going to add some black wax around all those edges with all that detail. And again, I will leave a product list and affiliate links where possible in my description box for everything I use in this video. Once I have that brushed on, I go ahead and wipe it back with a soft cloth. And now I'm going to use my clear wax to come in and make sure I don't have any of that attaching to the inside of that little nameplate. Um, I just want it around the detailed edges, not on the center, but because I used a paint with a top coat and the transfer has a natural kind of um, protection to it, it's really easy to just wipe that back. So now it's time to add the rooster. I'm gonna go ahead and tape him down in place so that I can peel that backing off and get him laid down right where I want him. Then I use my little transfer tool to adhere him to my board. And there are some grooves and whatnot, but I just work my way through all that. Um, you can use the transfer stick like on its side so that it gets into the grooves. And once I have him on there, I go ahead and burnish it with the transfer sheet. And then I notice that one of his little parts of his his top piece, his, what's that called? The little poofy thing on the top. It had come off and luckily I was able to just put it right back in place and transfer that back down. Okay, so I had to Google this because I had to know. That thing on the top of his head is called a comb. Then I used a straight edge, it's like a clay tool, to get down into those grooves the best I could and make sure that that is all burnished down into the grooves. So now I'm gonna take some Dixie Bell's Van Dyke Brown Glaze and go over my rooster, just brushing this on and then wiping it back. It won't com completely cover this. I'm just gonna add a little bit of age to it. And I forgot to mention that the rooster came from the IOD's Brocant um, collection as well. So now I'm using my antique gold rub and buff to go around all those details that I did in the black wax as well as around the edges of this little name plaque. This really was a nice added touch to this. I think it um, looks really aged but still elegant and just works out really well with the whole theme of this board. I'm using the DuraClear matte varnish to seal the transfer and again here you could use whatever sealer you want and at this point you could use a wax over this as well. I'm using my tight bond wood glue to attach this to my board. I'm pretty much just eyeballing the placement of this. You know, I do kind of use the whole finger measurements here and there to make sure that it's, you know, approximately where it needs to be. I didn't want to get hung up on exact measurements and overthink it. And the final step for this will be to finish up that back with a coat of black acrylic paint. I think this one might be my favorite because it's so simple and yet just such a great statement piece at the same time. Let me know what you think of this one in the comments. For project two, I'm using this gold bucket that I thrifted. 
wasn't much of a bargain. I paid $3 and these sell for $5 brand new. I think people use them like for weddings and anniversaries and showers and stuff. So uh, the first step, of course, was to get all the stickers off, give it a good cleaning, and then I painted it with my satin espresso paint on the inside and I did flat white on the outside. Now I'm going to take my bakery tissue and do some decoupage on this. So I'm going to first tear off all the straight edges so I have a nice organic edge and then crumple this up. We want lots of texture, lots of wrinkles around this bucket. I'm going with the Mod Podge dishwasher safe just to give this some added protection. I thought this might be um, an item that could be outside on your porch and maybe not out directly in the weather, but um, I just thought it would be have more protection than just regular Mod Podge. So I do a nice even layer of the Mod Podge onto the bucket. I lay my tissue paper down and then I use my brush just to kind of smooth things out. I, I don't want to get rid of the wrinkles, but I do want everything to lay flat, especially those edges. So I do go in and make sure those are glued down well. Now I'm just pressing this down with whatever glue is left on my brush. I'm not adding more glue to it. And right there in that spot, I had torn a hole through the tissue paper. So I just patched it up with another little piece that I tore out. And I'm going to continue this process around the entire bucket. When I got to the handles, I did have to go in and do some trimming with my scissors. I don't want that paper over the bracket that holds the handle. So I didn't glue that part. I just kind of trimmed around it. And then I added a little tiny strip up there in between the rim and the handle so that it didn't have a blank spot up there without this texture on it. Once it was dry, I was able to just kind of tear and sand off the excess around that bottom edge and then get that extra off of that little bracket that holds the handles. I had to use an X-Acto knife to go in and kind of trim that up, but I was able to get all the excess off. And then with that dry, uh, we can go in and go do our second coat of the Mod Podge over the entire bucket. I'm going to add some castings to this. I'm using Vintage Roots. It's a redesign uh, product that you can get from Amazon. I'm using my IOD air dry clay. I've dusted my mold with cornstarch and now I'm going to press that clay in there and I decided to try a tip that somebody had shared with me because the these this carrot has like little tiny roots on it that I knew would break off when I go to demold it so I thought I'd try the freezer trick so I went ahead and once I got this all filled in and smoothed out with my little scraper I put it in the freezer for a while and it demolded really nicely like I really liked how that turned out but I still had some of those little roots break off regardless and so like right now in its frozen state um, I, I really like that but it melted very quickly in my hands and so I was kind of back to square one where I'm, I'm still dealing with just a fresh mold or casting. 
and I needed to get this glued on here. So I'm, you know, I'm up in the air about the whole freezer method. I don't know that it was really that helpful. Um, I used my wood glue to put this into place, and then I'm see I'm gluing on one of the little roots that came loose. And now I'm going to wipe off the excess glue with a little baby wipe. So the next two that I made, I just did without putting them in the freezer. Same thing, the little root pieces tend to get stuck and break off. But um, I was okay with that because I wanted these to be a little bit different than the first one anyway. So I didn't even fill in the entire mold at the top where the leaves are. I actually cut that down and made them shorter so that they would look different than the main carrot in the center. So I'm just using a little clay tool to clean up those edges and then I will glue this one on. Then I repeat the process with the third carrot. I'm using some modeling paste and a palette knife to add some more texture to this bucket. I'm just taking a small amount and kind of just rubbing it on there with the palette knife, smoothing it out a little bit with this little scraper. And I'm just going to go randomly over the bucket with this. Not total coverage. I just want bits and pieces of this different type of texture to kind of mimic like maybe plaster or something that's been chipped away. So I'm just going to do this randomly around the whole bucket and also making sure I get in between the carrots on the front. Now you could also use a crackle paste for this. I think that would be really interesting, especially if the surface underneath is smooth and not covered with this textured uh, tissue paper that I decoupaged on there. But for mine, I just opted with just the plain modeling paste. Once that was dry, I'm taking my Fusion chocolate paint and brushing over all of my carrots, dabbing back with a baby wipe, I ended up uh, adding just a little bit of water and, you know, just so it would flow better down into all the details of these carrots, wiping back the excess with a baby wipe. Now you do want to be careful with the amount of moisture that you add onto these castings at this stage because I have not painted over these, so they it's just raw clay. And if you get it too wet, it will... To compromise your clay so you just have to be really careful that you don't add a lot of water to it and when wiping it back that you don't oversaturate it in doing so once I had the carrots covered I went on to the rest of the bucket I did the same technique around the rest of the bucket this will allow that dark chocolate paint to get into all the little nooks and crannies of all that texture and have it in the background so that when we apply the other colors it will still be there peeking through from the background. When that was dry, it was time to start painting our carrots, and I'm starting off with leaf green. I'm going to go in with this over the tops of the carrots, brushing that on, and then dabbing it back with a baby wipe. I'm going to be adding 
a couple of different colors so I don't want full coverage of this first color. While those are drying, I'm going to add Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Terracotta to my carrots. And again, I'll be wiping some of this back with a baby wipe, re-exposing that chocolate paint underneath. My next color is called Forest Moss. Now I'm going to paint the brackets and handles of the bucket with that same fusion paint called Chocolate. I'm taking the fusion paint in the color parchment and a moistened sea sponge to add some of this onto my bucket and then I'm going to blend that out with a baby wipe. I'm doing my layering of colors as I often do. I can I have the control with the baby wipe to get rid of as much of this as I want to. I'm just you know, it's just personal preference. I'm just blending this in, covering up some of that darkness, and um, then I can go in with another color and layer that. So I just get a lot of variation, a lot of interest. The hard part was going in between the carrots on this. Um, but here's the next color. We're going to go with French linen. Same thing. I'm going to Dab that on with a sponge and then blend it in with a baby wipe. For more interest, I'm adding Dixie Bell's Grunge Glaze. I'm just going to brush this on all over and then wipe it back. It doesn't give a lot of coverage, so it's not going to like cover up all the previous blending. It just adds a little bit of age to it. Now I'm taking my Sage Shadow Chalk Paint and doing some dry brushing on the tops of the greenery, but it just really didn't add much. By the time it was dry, it just didn't add a lot of highlight. So I do go back in and uh, use a different color for that. Now while that's drying, I am going in and adding another coat of the terracotta onto my carrots. They were super pale. I wanted just a little more coverage, but still allowing that chocolate to show through. And when that's dry, I'm going to dry brush these with a couple of different colors. This one is called pumpkin, I believe. I'm gonna lay that down first in a dry brush fashion. I do, again, I just don't want total coverage of any of these colors. I want to blend them all somewhat and um, have different highlights and whatnot on my carrots. Next up is a color called Tangerine. I added a color called Ripe Apricot, and at first I really liked it. I thought it was a good highlight, but after everything was dry, it just seemed like way too pale. Like my carrots looked sickly, not healthy. So I actually did go back in after that and add some more of the 
tangerine color. I'm dry brushing lime green over the tops of these. This was a great color to kind of bring that section of greenery back to life. I decided to mix my own color for dry brushing highlights on my carrots. So I'm mixing tangerine with white and just dry brushing over all those carrots to give them a little extra highlight. Now it's time to make some rust. I have Georgia clay, burnt sienna, and orange spice. I thought originally I would do the typical rust technique using baking soda, mixing that into my paint and then dabbing that on. And so what I normally do is I get one color, add the baking soda, paint that on, and then I go to another color, like right here I'm mixing in the next color with the baking soda and blending that in as well. But um, once I got this on here, it was, it was just too much. It didn't look subtle enough for the look of this bucket. I did not want the rust to be like the star of the show. So after I get kind of partway done with this, I decided to just kind of wipe it all back and start over using just the paint and not the baking soda. It was it just wasn't appropriate for this particular project. But that's what I've used in the past and it works really well when it fits with the project. And I end up not using the Georgia clay. It was way too red. So I mostly just used the other two colors and then I brought in this antique gold color because rust does have a little bit of gold or yellow in it. Um, so anyway, this is where I'm just kind of trying to figure this out. Do I want this to run down? I thought I wanted the rust to run down the side of the bucket. Uh, but so it was trial and error on this one. So here's where I decide to mist it. I'm holding a paper towel underneath it because I want it to run, but not all the way down. So I'm trying to add a little more paint in there when I missed and see if I can get that paint to flow a little bit. But it just wasn't, it wasn't working for me. It just didn't look right. So I end up just wiping as much of that back as I can. And then I start fresh with just doing really light strokes of the different paint colors, blending them, but being lighter uh, with to the touch so that I can get a more subtle rust look. Okay, so this is where I start repainting. And what you'll see is I'm gonna go in with the one color. I'm gonna dab that back with a baby wipe and then add another color and dab that back and so on and so forth. And that's how I end up achieving the look that I ended up being really happy with. And this is the final result of that, much more subtle. I repeat that process around the top rim of the bucket, and a little later on, I will be, be doing the bottom rim as well. And you'll notice that I'm smudging these colors with my finger as I paint them on. That's just to help blend them together. And then I use a baby wipe to just wipe off random sections to give it a more natural look. With that done, I'm going to take my DuraClear Matte Sealer and seal in my carrots. I do two coats of this to make sure they are well protected. Now for the bottom, I had painted it with that chocolate fusion paint, but there were brush marks. So I'm going in with that same paint and stippling to give it a textured finish. Then I sealed in the bottom rim and the handles and the brackets that I did the rust technique on with that same matte sealer. Music 
I made a hang tag for this, so I'm going to briefly go through it. I have a piece of white cardstock that I just cut out and then did the sides with this little punch. I tore out some, um, you know, vintage book pages to glue onto my white cardstock. I used my tear ruler to give them a nice rough edge. I will glue those on and then add some embellishments. I sand off the excess paper around the sides and then ink the edges. This is a PET sticker that I got from Timu. I found it was helpful to add some scotch tape to it to pull it apart from the backing. I just stuck that on there, trimmed off the edges, added a little extra glue to keep it down. I'm adding a little paper button and then a dragonfly PET sticker as well to the top of this. Just going to trim that up, sand off any excess, ink the edges again, and then I can punch a hole in it and hang it on my bucket. And here's how this one turned out. Now on to our vintage shabby chic items. I have this tray I picked up from Dollar General. It was half price, so I only paid $2.50. After I get the stickers removed, I'm going to go ahead and remove the handles that are on this. I thought that I would be reusing them, but I end up not doing that because it just did not fit this style. With that done, it was time to give this a good sanding. I did not want that design to come through because sometimes even if it doesn't look raised, it still shows through. So I sanded that down the best I could. And then I'm going to seal this with the Duracoat Matte Sealer to help prevent any bleed through of what is left of that design. I'm giving this a couple of coats of Dixie Belle's Chalk Mineral Paint in the color Buttercream. When the paint was dry, I started adding my Mod Podge. I'm going to do the iron-on method here. So I'm going to do a good, solid, even layer of Mod Podge over the interior of the tray, let it dry, and then I have this napkin that I got from Timu, and I'm just figuring out how I want to lay this out on there. It's only a two-ply napkin, so it was really easy to just remove that bottom ply and then lay this out and kind of put creases where I need to trim this down to fit. It wasn't an exact fit, but I would rather have a little bit extra that I can trim off after the fact than to have it come up short. So now I have a piece of parchment paper that I'm laying down over my napkin and using my little craft iron. I'm going to iron this down, moving my parchment paper around to avoid the bulk in the corners so I can get as close to all those edges and those corners as I can, checking periodically to make sure that it's all adhering. And I think the setting on my craft iron was like in the medium to high s section. I'm not really sure. Uh, sorry about that. Um, I just turned it on and when it was hot I just went for it so I'm not really sure what the setting was. So in those corners where uh, my craft iron couldn't get I just went ahead and added the Mod Podge in there with a brush and smoothed that down with my fingers. So now we're on to some castings for the corners of this tray. This is another mold from Amazon. And again, if I can find it, I'll leave the link for it. I'm, I chose these little pieces that I could put one on either side of that little corner mitered section and kind of drape them down around the edge of the tray. I'm applying these with my wood glue. And I'm just going to line those up and get them on there where I want. 
and then kind of mold the bottom piece. It doesn't go all the way down the edge of the tray, but just a little bit. Just make sure everything is attached really well. I'm going to repeat this process for all four corners. I'm going to trim away the excess napkin on the edges with an X-Acto knife. With that excess trimmed off, I am doing my top coat of Mod Podge over the entire napkin on the interior of this little tray. Next up is a coat of my white gesso over the castings and the outer edges of this tray so that I will have a good uh, primered coat to accept my paint. Some of the, the wood on this looks like some type of, you know, manufactured wood. So I really wanted to add a primer coat so it doesn't soak up all my paint so readily. I'm going to make a custom color here using conch shell and mocha. The pink in the napkin has a lot more of a uh, peachy color to it than pink. I, I, when I first looked at it, I thought it was, you know, like a conch shell type pink, but when you put them together, it it made the napkin look like way more peachy and orangey. So that's why I mix these two colors together. It It is a really pretty close match to the shade of pink that's in the napkin. So I think it looks better that way. And I'm just painting the entire uh, frame of this tray and the castings as well with this little custom made color. So now I'm going to be doing some stamping. I have this stamp from Timu. It's uh, called Postcard, I believe. And I'm using Stays on Ink in the color Timber Brown. And at first I inked it up and I dabbed it off onto a paper towel because I did not want this to be a deeply pigmented stamp. I wanted it to look kind of faded and vintage, but I dabbed off too much, so I didn't get a good impression. So I had to go back, ink it up again, and redo it. And then I'm just going to apply this randomly over that outer edge of my tray. This is another stamp from Timu. It had, I think, a butterfly and some script on it. There were several in the set including some flowers and different things that I just randomly added these with that postcard stamp, just making some uh, variation in the stamping on that perimeter of the tray. Once that ink was dry, I used some fine grit sandpaper, doing a light sanding, just to add a little bit more to this vintage look. I decided to go in with some white finishing wax over the perimeter of the tray and the castings. I brushed this on and then wiped it back with a rag. However, I wasn't thrilled with the way it looked, so I thought, well, I can add a little bit of age to the castings with some antique wax. So I went ahead and added that with a brush and then wiped back the excess. And I left it like that for a while, but I end up going over the rest of it with the antiquing wax as well because I did not like the way it looked on its own with just the castings having that. So at first I thought, well, maybe if I do the edge in the antiquing wax, that will look good. Um, it, you know, it just, <laughs> it's just a process, right? Okay, so I didn't like how dark that was on the edge, so I'm adding my clear wax in as an eraser 
to kind of wipe that back so it's not quite so dark. But yeah, we just, we go through the process. We figure out what we like, what we don't like. I actually wanted these shabby chic items to be more brighter and not so antique. But for some reason, I just got caught up in that cycle of it doesn't look right if it doesn't have like age to it. So anyway, here we go. I've got some, I think this is chiffon. Uh, it's like a roll of this like ribbon only it's just fabric. And I got this from Timu. So I'm, I'm cutting this in half and then I was fuzzing up the other edge because it has like the fringe on the one side so I wanted that side that I cut to be fringy and I'm going to use Fabri-Tac glue to apply this to that inside edge with half of it going up the wall of the tray and the other half being on the top of the tray. I'm using Fabri-Tac glue for this so you need a little bit of patience. It doesn't set up right away so, but, you know, it gave me some working time to get it in just the right position, just so I have a little bit of that fringy, airy fabric just folded up into that corner from the edge of the tray onto the top of the tray. I trim off the excess at the corner, make sure everything's glued down really well, and then I can go ahead and do the other sides. So now I have these pearls I want to add. I got this ginormous roll off of Amazon. It's ridiculous. <laughs> oh my gosh. I have pearls to last me forever, but they were the perfect size for this. And again, using the Fabri-Tac glue, I'm going to add these on top of that layer of chiffon to just give it that little extra shabby, chic, girly look to it. And these worked out perfectly when you get to the corner. You know, you just kind of, because they're small, you can just bend it into the corner and it just worked out great. So here's where I decided to go ahead and add the antiquing wax around the rest of that perimeter where I had added it to the castings. I'm just going to finish that off so it's all the same. And then I go in with my antique gold rub and buff and do the highlighting onto the castings, just hitting the high spots for the most part using my finger and just adding that little bit of uh, glitz and glamour. So now for the feet, I'm using these uh, wood knobs from Hobby Lobby. It's called Wood Pile. Now on this, there was this one spot where it wasn't evenly, um, when they put this tray together, it wasn't even. I needed to build up that little spot just a little. So I took two pieces of cardstock that was like the perfect thickness, glued them together, and then marked them and cut them to fit into that corner so that I would have a level surface for the knob to fit onto. I glued that on with Fabri-Tac glue and when it was dry, I went ahead and attached my little feet with my tight bond wood glue. When the glue had set up enough that I could turn this over, I did that and then I added some weight to the top so that I could let this just finish setting up overnight. When that was done, it was time to work on the back of this to give it a nice finished look all the way around. So I'm using my white gesso as a primer 
for my paint on the back side of my tray. I'm going to do this over the entire tray as well as the little ball feet. With the primer coat all dry, I'm using Fusion Paint in the color Chateau. I will do two coats of this. So once that was dry, I'm adding some antique wax to the feet. I'm going to brush this on and wipe it back with a cloth. And then I'm going to go in with my antique gold rub and buff and just kind of brush around on those feet, kind of like a dry brushing, to add that same uh, flavor of antique gold as I did on the castings. And I failed to show you earlier, but I had done, when I did the castings on the top, I had also gone around that top edge of the tray with my finger, just like I'm doing here. I wanted to make that the same on the bottom edge to match that. And I'm sorry I didn't show that. I don't know what happened to that footage. But so now we have the antique gold on the top edge, the bottom edge, the feet, and the castings. So here's the original handles. I painted them that espresso color that I did on the inside of my carrot can. And I did not like the way those looked. I didn't think I could make them work. So here we go. I'm going to make some new handles with some wood beads and the same chiffon ribbon roll that I have from Timu. I am putting these wood beads on a little wooden skewer. I wrap some scotch tape around so that I can set those down onto that tape and it will keep them in place while I paint them. And I'm painting them with uh, Fusion's Chateau. I'm going to set that in a styrofoam block and let it dry. And then I need to drill the holes from the original handles just a little bit bigger so that I can feed that ribbon through there. So what I did was I took a really small drill bit, went through that hole, and then I graduated slowly up to a bigger drill bit because I did not know if this wood would handle just going in with a bigger drill bit. Like I said, it's some type of manufactured wood and I just, I wanted to be careful about that. So I added the um, gilding wax in the color pearl and it's super pretty, but it actually looked way too gray for the colors I have on my tray. So I ended up going over them with some of the antique gold, of course, um, rub and buff. So now I have my ribbon that I have, the only way I could get it through here was to feed um, a needle and thread through there and then poke the needle down through the hole and then pull that ribbon through. I didn't feel comfortable in making the holes any larger. I felt like it would compromise them because it was too close to the edge of the tray. So I just figured out how to make this work. So now that I know how to get the ribbon through there, I can add my bead because I need one bead on that end. So I'm gonna feed that through. So I have one bead on that hole and then another bead on this hole those will be like the base of my handle. And then I can go ahead and finish feeding through that um, other end of the chiffon fabric. So then we have like this little fabric handle. I tried to figure out exactly how much height I wanted there and then I glued the bead down onto the tray with some Fabri-Tac glue. On the bottom, I just tied a knot on each end up against that, up against the bottom of the tray as close as I could get. And then I tied the two ends into a knot 
I snipped off those ends and then I just glued them down underneath that piece with some hot glue. I repeated the same process on the other end and that will do it for this one. Let me know what you might have come up with for an alternative solution to the handles. Here's how it turned out. Fourth and final project is this little rocking horse I have had for probably 15 years or more. I haven't used him in my decor for a very long time now, so it's time for a makeover. I'm starting off with a primer coat of my flat white spray paint. When that was dry, I attempted to do a coat of the Folk Art paint in the color conch shell, but the, the coverage just wasn't what I needed, so I decided to mix that and go in with my Dixie Belle chalk paint in the color soft pink. I got much more coverage and figured I could go over this with the other color to get the color that I wanted that would be similar to what I did on my tray. So once that coat of Dixie Belle paint was dry, I did go over this with the conch shell paint to achieve that look. I used Fusion paint in the color chocolate to paint the bottom of the rocking horse. Now for the saddle and the medallions on the horse, I went with the Java chalk paint. And I'm not sure why. I don't know why I didn't use the Fusion Chocolate paint. I think maybe I felt like I would get better coverage with this one. I'm not sure. Um, it's still a mystery to me. <laughs> I think when we get in our creative mode, sometimes um, our brain doesn't analyze like why we're doing what we're doing. It's very strange. But anyway, I went ahead and went over all those little raised areas that were previously metallic with that paint. I did a couple of coats and then I went in with Dixie Bell's Sea Glass to cover that up with the idea that I could distress back to that brown Java chalk paint. This was a little bit tedious, um, small areas to paint, but uh, anyway, I so then I, I do the sea glass on the bottom. This is why I don't understand why I didn't use the same paint, because I'm doing the same thing on the bottom rails of the, you know, painting over with the sea glass. So I went, I tried to wet distress and it wasn't going through. So then I got out my sandpaper and I'm very lightly sanding because I know I'm going to go through that paint into like beyond the paint underneath and then I'll bring back out the underneath metallic. Uh, so I had to use a very light hand and I did get some um, of the metal showing through and I had to go back and touch it up. Now I'm painting his eyes with the Fusion Chocolate Paint and then I'm going in with my clear wax to seal this all in but also to prep it for some antique wax so that I'll be able to wipe that back. I'm rubbing it on with my fingers and then just wiping it back with the cloth. Now at first I thought I wanted to do the antiquing wax just on the areas where I did the Dixie Belle sea glass paint but then I decided to just do the whole horse I didn't think it looked right um, with the pristine pink I don't know I like I said before I just couldn't get away from the aging of everything on these 
So I guess I'm not your shabby chic expert, that's for sure. But, you know, I gave it a shot. So I wiped on the antiquing wax and uh, then wiped it back off with a cloth. And now I'm going in with some white wax to just kind of tone that down, freshen it up a little bit, give it an extra look to it. So now I'm making a little shabby bow. I just have some strips of lace and tea towel and some of those pearls the, that, you know, gargantuan roll of pearls I got from Amazon. And I layered them crosswise and then I'm tying them together. I'll fluff them out a little bit, trim off the edges and then I can hot glue that onto the neck of my little rocking horse. Once I get this hot glued on there, I take a button from my stash, I snip off the hook on the back side, and then glue that onto the center of my bow, and this little horse is done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you find my content useful, and will like and subscribe if you haven't already. But more importantly, I hope I've inspired you to go create something. See you next time.